Hey everybody, Laravel 10 was just released recently. Let's talk about the top three things that you need to know about Laravel 10. One, return types, and perhaps the most controversial of them all because people use the framework differently and so there's been some controversy in the community. Two, there's a new first party package called Laravel Pennant. It's for feature flags. And three, there's a new class for making command line calls that's called the process facade. All right, I have a fresh Laravel project here. And as I mentioned, the return types have been added. So let's start with controller. So if we do a resource controller, PHP artisan make controller and then resource. Let's open up the return type controller. All right, so in, in the return type controller here, you can see that all these have return types. So this one has response, this one has response, and this one has a redirect response. Now, the source of controversy here is that perhaps somebody may want um, a view on this one and on store, they might want a JSON response here. And so because use the pe because people use the framework differently, um, you know, the, other people are going to want certain specific return types and other people are going to want other return types. And so this is probably the biggest source of controversy right here in this particular thing. Let's take a look at a mailable. So in the mailable, we've got, you know, the envelope needs to return an envelope, the content needs to return content, etc. Attachments need to return an array. Now, these types of things are going to be great for your IDE because your IDE is going to already know when you're using this mailable that when you call the envelope or when you call content, etc., how to interact and how to use those things. The other additional thing here that was removed was, you know, before there were doc blocks, perhaps with return types, etc. But that was removed because, you know, we can just use the return type here and we don't need all that extra doc block stuff. Let's take a look at what a migration. And this one is going to be super simple because, you know, there's not really much going on in a migration. So, so if we just do return type migration, and these are ones return void, but everything's going to have that return type now, even if it's, you know, not returning anything like this, such as void. Um, and this is, again, just a, a good, you know, best practice that I believe in wholeheartedly because, you know, when you're working with a team and you're, you've got all these things, the IDEs are going to complete things much better if you're standardizing your inputs and your outputs. And the last one that I want to look at is the rule. So we're going to just make like a valid validation rule. And let's open up this one. So return type rule. Let's see. All right. And again, this is another one that doesn't need to return anything because, you know, when something doesn't go quite right, we just call the fail function. But the reason that I wanted to bring this one up in particular was because this still has a return type for this specific parameter here. And it does so by saying that the param with a closure of string is going to return this which is awesome because again this is just allowing our ide to inspect these things and then you know we're, we're when we're using it, it it just makes our lives easier because when we say arrow it can start completing stuff for us and it's going to make our life that much better all right so for the second awesome feature again that's going to be laravel pennant the feature flagging first party package that's now um, something that you can include with Laravel. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do that, we need to do a composer require and then Laravel pennant. That's going to install, you know, the, the things necessary for this, this new package. Now, again, so according to their documentation, we need to publish the config. So that can be found on 
uh, Laravel's website for the Laravel pennant, um, you know, package, and I'm just copied and pasted it here. So we're going to publish that and it's saying that it already exists because I was testing it out earlier, but otherwise it would, you know, publish that, um, config file and then also create a migration. Speaking of migrations. So there, there's two ways that you can, um, use the feature flags. You can do an in memory for feature flags, and then you can also save the feature flags in the database. So there's kind of two different drivers, an array and database. And so that's why it has this migration. Let's quickly take a look at that migration. So this is what the migration looks like. We've got an ID, a name, scope, and value. And it's creating a unique key with name and scope. So essentially that name and scope need to be unique when you combine them together. If they're not, uh, MySQL will throw an error. All right, so let's define our first feature and kind of how we would go about defining features and then using that in the future. And then kind of how we would go about using that throughout our application. All right, uh, without diving too deep into the feature flagging with Laravel Pennant, because that could have a completely separate video, there is just so much stuff packed into Laravel Pennant. We're just gonna go ahead and create a simple uh, feature in our app service provider. So we're gonna open up app service provider. And inside the boot method, um, I've just copied and pasted from the Laravel documentation. So this is kind of what a feature could look like. So I'm gonna import this just to make it easier on us. So there's a couple things to unpack here. So you define your feature, you define what's being passed in so that you can kind of use that to define, figure out what, you know, is this feature enabled or disabled? And then you can also have a default, which is kind of cool. And so what this is saying is that, you know, the chances of this happening is 1%. This will be really nice for the people who want to perhaps do A-B testing. Um, so this is kind of how you define a feature. But another way to define a feature is you can actually create a whole separate class. And then in that class, you can have scopes and you can pass in different types of stuff because by default, features um, will grab the logged in or auth user. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but you can tweak that with the scopes and other things kind of built into the features. There's a new blade directive for features. So if you're in a blade, so if we were to go into, let's say the welcome. So in the blade here, if we wanted to check, you know, if something has a feature, we could just go like at feature and then new API and then end at feature. And so then this will check to see if they have the feature. And if they do have the feature, you know, we can then show whatever it is that we'd like here. If we wanted to check if a feature is active, you know, outside of a blade file, let's just go back to the app source writer here. We can just go feature active and then give the feature to check whether or not it's active and then that's it. So there's a way that you can actually check if multiple are active. So the function is literally called all are active and you can pass in an array. So like if we had new API and we had um, some other feature, both of these would have to be active in order for, you know, this to return true. There's so many others. There's, it's really endless um, in terms of like your ability to check and do all these different things for these feature flags. This is a really nice addition to Laravel. All right, the last thing that I wanna talk about is the new process class and the process facade by Laravel. This allows us to run command line arguments and things like that. So I'm gonna grab the example from the Laravel documentation. Here's the example from the Laravel docs. Again, this is something that you could just grab and test out in the Laravel docs your own, but I think it's just awesome that I wanna outline just how awesome some of this stuff is. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, now we can see that we have the output from the command down below. It's really that easy. And there's, there's quite a bit here that you can do. So if we just do result arrow, we can kind of see all the different things that we have access to. And again, this is the benefit of working with classes because now our ID can complete some of this stuff. So if we want to check to see whether or not the command that we just ran failed, we can do that. It just makes working with these command lines 
you know, a lot better, a lot easier, and a lot more expressive. And so this is another great addition to the Laravel ecosystem. Thank you so much for checking out my video. If you thought this was helpful or useful, I'd appreciate if you could like or comment and subscribe as it helps me out a ton.